there are still a lot of Tenno that only use the Kuvanu core as a primer. But nowadays you got much better solutions for priming. And the brand new Blast Proc just unlocked a special level of performance for the new core. Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be re-diving deeper into the Kuvanu core. As per the usual, we'll have an introductory level setup and an endgame setup. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides always take that new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva. No. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that just a couple of our usual free shots. You guys like the fashion? You dig? You should dig. The Nucor is a secondary beam weapon with a massive default range of 29 meters and it still makes contact. Now isn't that freaking insane? Not only that, you can also add Runes extension for even more range. But wait, there's more. The weapon does change to two additional targets, doing 50% of the initial damage. Adding punch to the weapon does not mean you're going to be getting additional chains now, but it does mean that your primary beam will be going through multiple targets. So if you got a clump of ability, that's definitely a smart idea. Outside of that, there is really nothing to complain about the nuke or you point you shoot, there is no recoil, there is no waiting around for anything, the reload time is awfully quick, the magazine is 77, the Kuva Nukor, when it comes to usability, is definitely one of the better weapons you're gonna come across in Warframe. Now let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 80 out of 80, why 80 and not 60? This, my friends, is a nemesis weapon, a Kuva weapon, tenant weapons, and the Parasesis, if I remember correctly, can go over 60%. You get two additional mod capacity with every format you plug into it, factor in the Orokin Catalyst that will double your mod capacity, that's how you get to 80. Do you need 80 mod capacity? No, uh, hell no, definitely not, but if you want all the mastery points out of a Kuva weapon or a sister's weapon, well, basically, you will have to form up five times. It doesn't really matter all that much, just something to bear in mind for the build that I'm recommending you. Two to three forma will be more than plenty. Now, my bonus is 60% toxin. Is this the meta way to go? No, 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 it's actually not. It used to be, but not anymore. It would be a lot smarter right now for you to go for something like heat, for example. But don't worry, even with toxin, and it's still gonna absolutely shred. Fire rate is high, the magazine is good, reload on 2 seconds, the accuracy is very high because as long as you can point your mouse or your controller you will have no problem in destroying your targets, the Riven disposition is destroyed because everybody plays with this weapon, but probably not be surprised to hear that most players use this as a primer, you do not need to use this as a primer, nowadays it's much better to build your little sentinel in its weapon into a primer, it's much more convenient and you can save your weapons for you know doing actual weapon things. Critical chance, abysmal, 7%. This is a trademark of the Kuva Nukor and the Nukor in general. 7% critical chance and a massive critical multiplier at 5x. You can use bonus additive after effects such as Arcane Avenger to make use out of that high base critical multiplier. And the base damage is gonna be radiation. It makes the target's heads big. Did you know that about the Nukor? Well, it does. It's got its own thing, that whole microwave ping it's got going on look at that big head look look at that that's just <laughs> like a bubble head corrupted heavy goon and again the secondary damage that you saw there the toxin that's down to your progenitor right now i do recommend heat now let's say you're more of a newer player and your friends carried you through a lich hunt and you got the kuva nuko should you keep it yes 100 it's a fantastic weapon now i don't necessarily recommend it for destroying mobs at lower levels, I recommend it for destroying mobs at higher levels. And the reason behind that is you need the right mods. But let's just say you want to build it for a more introductory level Tenno, you're looking at something like this. Damage to Hornet Strike, Multi Shot, Battle Fusion, Lethal Torrent, as well as Fire Rate, which is very important on a beam weapon such as this one. And we got a whole bunch of status mods. Now, we're not really gonna be building critical chance, critical damage on this one. And since you're a newer Tenno, I'm assuming you don't have Arcane Avenger just yet. If you do, just bloody use the damn thing. 
Pistol Elementalist is more of a newer mod. This gives you status damage for slash, heat, etc. And in case you didn't notice, by this point, this is gonna be a heat build. It's a bit more complicated than it needs to be because of the Valence Fusion 60% Toxic. So what am I doing? A whole bunch of heat radiation and viral. The radiation you cannot get across. And the viral in this case, I'm kind of forced into because of Valence Fusion 60% Toxin bonus. Now, what you need to understand is that when it comes to hitting what we used to recognize as the toughest faction, they're not necessarily the toughest faction anymore. They are no longer vulnerable to corrosive damage, corrosive contact damage. Nowadays, the Orokin, which used to be the Corrupted, are vulnerable to Vital Damage as a Contact Damage. So you know how you used to Prime with Vital from your Sentinel and do Contact Damage Corrosive? Now those roles have shifted. In any case, I get more into detail about the changes that we saw a couple of months ago. Link the cards right now in case you're not aware of those. Now let's try to see what this does to 100 Corrupted Heavy Goons. First without the Steel Path modifier and then with the Steel Path modifiers. There are no buffs coming from Harrow. This is just a gun against regular targets. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And I don't just mean the big head. The thing is, you're going to be stacking heat procs like crazy on these targets. So even at this low level with basic mods, this is still so much more than a primer. I just love it for the comedic value, honestly. The, the big heads on the stuff just really get me going. In any case, in just a couple of seconds, you're going to be able to stack. Look, look at the stacks. And this was from the additional beam that doesn't do as much damage. Look at that. Absolutely bloody fantastic. So you can cream normal level up until level 100 and level 100 with just the Kuvanu core alone without any issue whatsoever. But let's say, hey, hold on, bro. I just hit Steel Path. Is this good enough for Steel Path? This is still a basic level build with basic level mods, but let's turn on the seal pad modifiers and uh, submit the corrupted heavy goons. Now, here's the thing. Why are you not spawning a battle group? Because the rest of the targets are just so bloody easy to kill. I'll show you a comparison. It feels like I'm, sh I'm showcasing the weapon to be more powerful than it actually is with these bloody battle groups. So that's why we're doing the corrupted heavy goon. We're going to do a battle group as well. So... As you would expect, with the Steel Path modifiers enabled, these guys are significantly more tough. But there is a breaking point when your stacks just simply get too high and they explode. It almost feels like their head is exploding because of the special ability. Look at that, look at that, boom. <laughs> I just love that. So yes, you can still even melt Steel Path with a basic level build. And now don't get me wrong, it's no Incarnate Torrid. I mean, come on, we just got basic builds, but still... You can if you got the know-how. And again, no outside buffs coming from the Warframe. Now let's clear these guys and go for a Orokin battle group. Jeez, it feels, it feels good to be back in Warframe. You know, it feels right. Now this is a battle group with the Steel Path modifiers on. And look, I see I shoot a Butcher and it just explodes. This is the reason why I don't want to showcase a whole lot of tests on these. It just makes the weapon seem more powerful than it actually is. But yes, if you want to do Steel Path, with the Kuvano core, and you don't have the necessary mods to max it out, it is still quite possible. Is it one of the best secondary weapons in the game for this in specific? No, not necessarily. And if you're a newer Terno, I still think you're going to be better served by the Atomos. Did I link you the Atomos? In case I didn't, link the cards right now. But what if we want to rain holy fire upon our enemies? And you're not a newer player. I know, I know you got the mods, you know, you got the know how. You don't need me to tell you how to play. Absolutely not. But. Let's just check that build. Try something like this. Of course, you got a faction modifier on this one. Unfortunately, these are necessary for the most amount of damage out of, especially damage over time build. So if you're going to be stacking procs on something, you do need this one. I know, it's disgusting and gross, but it is what it is. Outside of that, Galvanized Shot, which fully works. Galvanized Diffusion, which fully works. Ruinous Extension, which is just even more range, so it can be even bigger. I wonder if they could add some girth, though, some mods for girth to the B anyway. Secondary Encumber, this one works a treat on the Kuvanu core because you're just non-stop applying procs to your target. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go for that. We're gonna go for a little bit of a primer. Like I said before, the smartest way to prime nowadays and the most comfortable way is to go for something like a Diriga. Make sure you get the Hellstrom from Fortuna, if memory serves. Uh, the guys, the, the guys, you know, with the, with the weapons and, the, you know, legs. I think the guy is called legs anyway. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comment section down below. Try something like this. We're going to be priming with Vital the old school way simply because I don't have Vital on the weapon. Now, as far as Warframe buffs are concerned, what we talked about earlier, you guys already saw this one coming. Avenger! Avenger! 
45% bonus additive after to make use out of that high critical multiplier, which we further augmented with prime target crackers. So now we're on 1005. Now, what else was there? You can go for more flat damage here, which we don't really need because of galvanized shot. And in my opinion, go for more fire rate. Because why the hell not with arcane velocity and in case you run out of ammo keep in mind that you don't need to go into runes extension in the standard build you had pistol ammo mutation you can take this one off you don't need to unlock this slot if you're a newer player if you're an end game veteran runes extension and if you're running out of into ammo issues because you're overdoing it with fire rate because that is fun then of course you switch back to pistol ammo mutation and i do believe there is a prime variant to that one as well but anyway we're gonna run avenger with velocity in this case so what are we spawning? The same Corrupted Heavy Gun. Now, this time we're going a little bit extra. Corrupted Heavy Gunner Eximus because these have Overguard and Overguard is definitely a thing. Level 205, Steel Path Modifiers Enable. Let's see what happens. Now, this is going to be a cold start and then we're going to do... Well, if it's not cold, it's going to be warm. But take a look at what the weapon can do. You might be wondering, hold on, Laser. Was there a pack of Corrupted Heavy Goons Eximus there a second ago? Yes, yes, there was. Promise, you can like rewind the video but now that the weapon is fully stacked and in full swing it just melts this is actually not necessarily the power of the new core per se this is more the power of the brand new blast proc because essentially that's what we're leveraging right now with this build in case you didn't notice by now the weapon can absolutely shred high level targets if the beam touches it they die the blast proc is absolutely sensational and i love it because I spent roughly six years bitching and moaning about the Blast Proc. Now, did they change it because of me? <laughs> no, 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 I'm pretty sure that's not the case. But I'm pretty sure they changed it because of us. Honestly, Blast was freaking terrible. And now it's not anymore. A weapon such as the Nucor or the Cycron, better the Nucor than the Cycron in this case, can 100% make use out of the brand new Proc. And it just melts everything. Look at that. This is incarnate level of performance. Keep in mind, these are not only Eximus, but Steel Path Eximus. But I know what you're gonna say. Hold on, this is just a simulacrum. You know, that, that argument doesn't really hold water anymore, but let's do a regular mission, shall we? Expel Murmur. Weirdly enough, D hasn't come out with a prime variant to Expel Murmur just yet. And you know what? <laughs> I wouldn't mind if they never come out with it. These are for the woes. Why doesn't he never say the Wombat joke anymore? I love the Wombat joke. Anyway, welcome my friends. This is Steel Path Survival versus the Murmur. And of course, this will be even more impressive looking than what we did earlier because we're just gonna get most of the enemies being fodder. Like the little doggies and I don't know, what are these? The Necromites, the Kulervin. I mean, come on. This weapon is just on its own very special level when it comes to regular weapons. This is, again incarnate level of performance out of a regular weapon and not being an incarnate weapon you know what that means i'll tell you what that means there's no charging going on and no worrying about the charge oh we got a charge got a headshot got a body shot oh wait i'll just play the incarnate turret for everything anyway look at this what can what, what, what can i show you i mean i'm just destroying trash mobs it's hardly fair for them to come up versus a revenant with a new core and of course, Revenant just chills, just stays alive, doesn't do much more than that, you know, lazy boy style. Now, tell me, my friends, there is one caveat with status builds and status weapons. 10 points to the guy that posted the first comment on this one. A few moments later. The problem with status builds is the fact that you might come across an acolyte. And acolytes, when it comes to status builds, they don't really care all that much because they have a cap on how many procs you can put out of four of a type. And that can spell doom and destruction for your status builds. That means that this weapon might actually struggle versus an acolyte. Not just this one in particular, essentially any status build. You get the general idea. But that does not mean that the Kubanukor can still quite easily kill an acolyte. At least at base level steel path. Has a look. As you saw there, it only took a couple of seconds to take out Angst, but the thing about Angst, it's probably the weakest and easiest Acolyte to take out, which is why we've got another one now. This one is Misery. Let's see if we can get a better position. So it's just us and Misery. <laughs> get it, you and Misery? 
like very easy joke i know i'm sorry i had to do it the damage that i'm dealing right now is actually quite high and it only took just again a couple of seconds to take out misery so the angst thing wasn't exactly a fluke this is just what the weapon is capable of despite it being a status weapon it still makes mincemeat out of careful base level acolytes I think I've seen one spawn. There we go. This is the rogue void rig, which gives so many people so much problems. I mean, look, it's gone. And here comes violence. Another acolyte. This one is actually a bit more dangerous. Let's see how fast we can like get rid of this one. Try to keep my distance. Look at his health melt. And that's it. He dead. Again, roughly, what was that? 10 seconds, 15 seconds, something of the sort. And violence is one of the more dangerous of the acolytes. And with that, my friends, I rest my case. The Kuvanu core is so much more than a simple primer. Now, there is a caveat to this. The fact that this is more of a showcase of the brand new Blast proc, which is not really all that new, but still, the Kuvanu core is one ideal weapon to showcase its power. And you can fully melt down Steel Path without much effort on the part of the wielder. I would even call this incarnate level of performance without the worry of charging the weapon. Headshot doesn't need headshots, doesn't need headshots and so on and so forth. Go out there and enjoy this absolutely glorious weapon. And again, go for a heat progenitor over a toxin one like I did. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, let me know in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, hey, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.